If you are interested in becoming a pathologist assistant but don't know what programs are out there or what information there is about the programs, then stay tuned. I'm going to walk you through how I would go about researching the different Canadian and American PA schools. Hey, it's Luke with Canadian Path Assistant and today we're looking at PA programs. So to do this, we're actually just going to jump right onto the computer. If you just go into Google and type in NACLS, that's N-A-A-C-L-S, in the search bar, uh, the first item that pops up you can just go ahead and open that. And then along the, the bar, kind of on the top, the find a program tab, just hit find. And then we're just gonna go program type and you are gonna select pathologist assistant program. And then you don't need to select state or country and then search from that. And what that's gonna do is bring up all of the accredited programs, both in Canada and the United States. Now they are split down here there is one that is inactive that is listed on the SNACLS website, and there is also one that is listed as a serious applicant status. So this is a school that is in the process of getting their accreditation. Currently, there are 12 programs that are fully accredited, and there are two that are under this serious applicant status. Now, the second school that has its serious applicant status isn't actually listed on here, but I'll show you another place where it is actually listed. But once you're on here, any of these schools, whether they are you know, close to home, uh, if you've heard anything about them, or even if you hadn't heard anything about them, you can actually click on one of these title links and it will bring you to the program homepage. And that will show you a bunch of things about admissions, courses, the faculty. You can find information about the curriculum and also tuition on here. Now, I'm not gonna lie, when you are trying to find information about tuition, that was probably the area that I had the most trouble with navigating these websites. It's not necessarily clear which, uh, which programs have tuition associated with what, and sometimes they're broken up into a per course or per credit or per hour basis. So it can get a little bit confusing. So if you're very interested in tuition, I would just contact the actual program itself directly just to make sure that you're clear on how much the cost is actually gonna be. But anyways, on the Snackles webpage, again, you can oversee all of the different programs. The only program that's not listed on here as a serious applicant program is currently the program from Tulane. And the way we can find that, or another way that we might find that as listed, go back to the good old Google tab and type in Path Assist and Snackles. And then the first tab that is available, if you just click on that, what this brings up is the AAPA or the American Association of Pathologist Assistance website. And they also have all the accredited training programs linked on here. They do not have, uh, at least on this first one, they do not indicate whether the program is a serious applicant or whether or not it is a fully fledged, um, you know, fully fledged accredited program, but you can find that information just by clicking through each of these individual programs. One note about the serious applicant status, you are applicable, or once a program is in serious applicant status, you are able to write the final certification exam. At the end of the program, you're still eligible and going from serious applicant to a fully fledged accredited program takes a minimum of about six and a half months, at least according to NACLS. So that gives you a reference point on where to find information about the different PA programs that are in North America, both Canada and the US. Again, there are 12 currently that are fully accredited and two that are undergoing uh, accreditation, I guess, in the process of accreditation. And that's the University of Alberta in Edmonton, that's in Canada, and the University of Tulane, that's in the United States. Now, all these programs, there is some variation in what they're looking for for admission criteria, but some general similarities between them all is they all are looking for you to have a bachelor's degree of some kind they are all offering a two-year program and that is typically one year of didactic and then one year of practicum or clinicals you are typically looking at a 3.0 out of 4.0 gpa minimum for entrance uh, they are also pretty much all of them are looking for reference letters as well as a cv as well as some kind of statement of intent talking about your professional goals, why you want to be a PA and what the PA profession is. Then from there, things may start to diverge a bit depending on what program you're looking at. Now, some programs are looking at, uh, they want you to have extra things like the GRE or an MCAT score before applying. Some have quite a long list of required science-based courses they'd like you to have before applying. Uh, typically things like multiple bio classes, multiple chem classes with labs, biochemistry, organic chemistry, math, anatomy, physiology, some histology, medical terminology, 
and maybe some intro pathology courses. I've seen all of those in the required courses even to apply. Other programs will treat some of those science-based courses like biochem, anatomy, physiology as recommended courses or things that will look good on your application if you, for example, don't have as much shadowing experience or any shadowing experience, or they may help bolster a weaker overall GPA if you've gone back and taken those courses uh, with a GPA that's right on that 3.0 baseline or maybe even below 3.0. Now, some of these programs, they say 3.0 is their minimum, but class size can range from anywhere from two all the way up to 30 students per program. So in order to kind of make that selection process easier, their average entrance GPAs usually tend to trend higher, maybe up to 3.3, 3.6 GPA, somewhere in there. So I wouldn't be surprised if the majority of applicants are accepted in that range. Now, another thing to consider is some programs are requiring you to have some kind of shadowing experience. Some do not have a minimum of shadowing experience. Some say they might want you to have 30 to 40 hours of shadowing, which is, I know, a ton and difficult to find considering the current climate that we're in, but just things to consider for your pursuit of a school. Another one of the big differences between these programs is the start dates that they have and their application deadlines also tend to vary. So programs can start anywhere from a January start to a summer start to even a fall start. And that sort of guides when their actual applications will be due. So I can't just say, you know, be done by March, have your applications in. Some will have a March cutoff. Some don't have a cutoff until later in the year. Now lastly, tuition. This can range actually a fair bit from program to program and is somewhat location dependent. So I'm gonna start off just by saying that finding the tuition information on each website, again, not as easy as you think if you're unsure or if it does not seem clear. I would get an idea and then email the program and say, hey, I think it looks like it's this much. Is this kind of what you intended for me to think tuition is? Some of the programs do go out of their way to provide a cost of the program as well as additional living expense estimations to give you sort of a full picture. Overall, there seems to be a trend for American programs to be more expensive relative to the, to the Canadian programs that may also reflect a higher average starting salary in the US compared to Canada. But Overall, again, guidelines, I would say that if you are going to school in Canada as a Canadian, you can expect to pay somewhere between thirty to $40,000, again, for a Canadian permanent resident. And for an international student coming to Canada, you're probably looking at paying somewhere between sixty dollars to $90,000 Canadian to go to school here. Again, that does not cost, that does not include the cost of things like food, transportation, uh, rent, stuff like that. So that is usually on top of the tuition fees. And now if you are looking at going to school in the States, it looks like you're going to be paying somewhere between $50,000 and $160,000 Canadian. Again, school dependent and it is also dependent on whether or not you are going to a private or a state school. So I know that tuition and cost of living expenses might seem fairly high, but there is an expectation that once you are done school and are certified, you'll be able to find a job relatively quickly that will pay you well. Now, if I was looking at applying to a program right now, some of the main things that I'd be focusing on are what are my prerequisites? Do I have that minimum 3.0 GPA uh, in my undergrad university? Do I have any of the prerequisites that some schools might consider or see as an asset? Things like any kind of biology classes, chemistry classes with labs, biochem, organic chem, uh, also microbiology, sometimes even a math, and some schools are even looking at English as a prereq. So having at least a few of those in there will help definitely for sure your application. Some schools, again, are not requiring shadowing, but I think having shadowing applying to program is an asset in any way, shape or form. So I would look to find that however possible. And then I'm also gonna weigh the cost of tuition to whatever school I'm applying. All of these schools are accredited, so they have to be giving the same, you would think overall quality level of education. And I would just weigh that with what kind of debt load I would want to be coming out of school with by the end of my two years. Again, school is a two year program, so I'm just keeping in the back of my mind, I'm probably not gonna be working full time while I'm in school. And then lastly, if you've taken the MCAT or GRE, then that might include a few extra schools for you that might not be in the running if you haven't taken those tests. So just things to consider for your application. Hope that gives you a bit of information about the different paid programs that are out there or where you can research more information about them. Good luck to anyone who is looking to apply and I'll catch you next time.